Our people are scattered. Like stars in the galaxy. What are we? What do we stand for? Being a Mandalorian is not just learning about how to fight. You also have to know how to navigate the galaxy. That way, you'll never be lost. I'm going to Mandalore so that I may be forgiven for my transgressions. May the Force be with you! This is the way. There's something dangerous happening out there. And by the time it becomes big enough for you to act, it'll be too late. Hang on, kid. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is The Way. There's a brand new Mandalorian Season 3 trailer to break down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references. So if you're brand new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes just like I did for Season 1 and Season 2. Be sure to subscribe to get them. We'll just start at the beginning of the trailer footage and work our way through shot by shot talking about Easter eggs and WTF moments. Some of it is repeated footage from the previous trailer with new dialogue and some of it's just like completely brand new scenes. It starts on that same foreign plant that we saw in the earlier trailer with Mando and the group of other Mandalorians talking about what happened to the Mandalorians after the Great Purge. They scattered to the sky like stars. All the survivors hiding in different planets in the Outer Rim. And during his voiceover dialogue, he's talking about what it means to be a Mandalorian because Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni said that that's what season three is all about. It's all about the Mandalorian's culture. And one of the cool things here is that it sounds like he's almost talking to Grogu about what it means to be a Mandalorian because for a long time we've had this theory that the title of the Mandalorian series isn't just about Mando, it's also about Grogu and Grogu will eventually become a Mandalorian. Because being a Mandalorian isn't so much about being born into their race, it's about adopting their creed. Meaning that Grogu could theoretically become a Mandalorian. How do you say this is the way in Yoda speech? The way this is. Which Dave Filoni has since clarified about how Yoda speaks. He said that that backwards way of speaking is just unique to Yoda and he did it to honor his Jedi Master who spoke that same way. All the other members of his race, like Yaddle for instance, speak normally. Dooku, step to me. Whatever your crimes are, help me now. So that means that when Grogu eventually does speak words, he'll speak normally. His whole speech about being a Mandalorian not being about just how to fight, it's about how learning to survive in the wilderness is meant to set up the end tag scene with Grogu taking down the alien that tries to kill him inside the cave. Because just like Yoda would say, judge him by his size, would you? He's super powerful in the Force. He goes back to Navarro, they have the scene with Grief Karg again, we saw that in the previous trailer. They have all the salacious crumbs hiding in the tree there. He's basically become the magister of this city now, like he's in charge of the city, he's got the 3PO droid with him. He speaks with the armorer to talk about how he's going back to the planet Mandalore to reclaim his honor as she told him he needed to do. It seems like she's on that same rocky planet with all these other Mandalorians. This is the planet Mandalore, this is their giant dome city post purge, like after it was blown up by the Empire years ago. We saw this all during the Clone Wars, like we've been inside the city many times when it wasn't blown up, when it was still intact. We get a May the Force be with you from Pelimato. More of Grogu pressing buttons. And here is Captain Carson Teva on Coruscant. If it wasn't clear, they're going back to Coruscant during season three. And we see Dr. Pershing flying. It seems kind of like a scene out of Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith, like you would have seen during the prequels with him just flying through the space lanes there. We also just saw a scene like this during the Andor series. The intercut other footage with Mando and Grogu talking to Bo-Katan, who seems like she's in a version of the hallway with the throne of Mandalore. They might actually say that this is the throne room of Mandalore. But the only changes is that during the Clone Wars episodes, the throne room itself looked very different. 
So this could just be a reinterpretation of that or just a different part of the throne room. But I think this chair is meant to be the actual throne of Mandalore, or at least as Bo-Katan thinks of it. It might just be the throne of Mandalore, but on a different planet, like they recreated it after they scattered to the galaxy. But the whole idea is that Mando has the Darksaber, and that's meant to be the right to rule, the sign of rulership. So technically, the throne of Mandalore should belong to him by rights, but Bo-Katan believes that it's hers, and she has to find a way to get the Darksaber from him, but she has to win it the right way, or else her people won't follow her. So it seems like right now they just have a tenuous alliance, like she's not super happy about the situation, but she doesn't absolutely hate Mando, so she's just going to use him however she thinks she can to bring her people together so that they can retake the planet Mandalore, because that's what she ultimately wants, is to retake the planet. When they talk about it being too late, these just seem like the caves beneath Mandalore where he's finding these helmets. Just the ruins of previous battles. This seems like another Order 66 flashback, another Grogu flashback. We got a little bit during the Book of Boba Fett, so it just sounds like he's going to be remembering more things from Order 66 about how he was rescued and sent into hiding. Maybe Hayden Christensen did another cameo scene as Anakin Skywalker. I didn't hear that there was going to be one. I do think that we're going to get some flashbacks with him during the Ahsoka series, though. More about Ahsoka in a second, because those episodes will also be coming later this year, so we'll get another trailer for that before too long. We go back to present day, and there are a bunch of TIE Advanced chasing after Mando inside his ship. Been a little while since we've seen some TIE Advanced. I'm not sure where he is, where he's in this room with all these droids, but remember the joke, that's the whole thing, is that Mando hated droids up to about Season 2. He's kind of backed off that just a little bit, like he doesn't hate them quite as much heading into Season 3. So maybe this scene just has some jokes about that. Droids, we don't serve their kind here, but then Mando steps into this other bar and it's nothing but droids, we only serve droids in this bar here. There's a whole bunch of R2 units in here, there's some battle droids, there's a whole bunch of easter eggs for droids from across the Star Wars canon. The group of blue Mandalorians might be part of Bo-Katan's Night Owls group, but they also might be part of the Armorers group, which is like a completely separate group of Mandalorians, because the heavy infantryman is here, and we know that he's Team Armorer. And we know that the armor absolutely hates Bo-Katan, so it's meant to be like a completely separate faction of Mandalorians. I cannot wait to see if they are going to fight Bo-Katan versus the armor. They have a scene with a bunch of Babu Frick's race. Then they end with the tag scene of Grogu taking down this giant animal with the Force. The fact that he takes it down with the Force, with the voiceover dialogue, this is the way, just supports the idea that eventually Grogu is going to actually become a real Mandalorian. Like he will take the actual creed at some point and consider himself a Mandalorian, like Mando. The other big thing that they don't show in the trailer here is Grand Admiral Thrawn, and there have been rumors about him being a much bigger character during the Ahsoka series, so I do think there'll be some sort of teaser at the end of this with Ahsoka. Like, she'll show up on the series for a cameo scene, another cameo scene, maybe with Sabine because they cast her relatively early. A lot of the characters during the Ahsoka series will follow the storyline that they set up at the end of Star Wars Rebels, so there'll be characters in live action from the ghost ship. For example, during the Ahsoka trailer, we actually saw that Mary Elizabeth Winstead is playing the live action version of Hera. They didn't say when those episodes are going to start, but I'm assuming sometime during the summer. And part of the idea is that it's set during the Mando-verse timeline, like five years plus after Return of the Jedi, but I think they'll have some flashbacks because Hayden Christensen is supposed to cameo as Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. And we'll see some flashbacks for Ahsoka's character. Like, there are a couple ways you include his character and for it to make sense. He can show up as a Force ghost in present day, or he can show up in flashbacks too. And because there are so many flashbacks for Grogu to Order 66, why wouldn't they also have flashbacks for live-action Ahsoka as well at some point? Hopefully they'll try a live-action version of Ahsoka versus Darth Vader, their reunion, because they actually didn't meet that many times after Order 66, because that was their first big reunion when she fought Darth Vader inside the Sith Temple, and it was her coming to terms with the fact that he did in fact turn into Darth Vader. I do think that they have plans for multiple more seasons of The Mandalorian, so I don't know how they're going to end Bo-Katan's story with Mando. They're still trying to retake the planet Mandalore from the Empire, but I believe that's going to lead to a big conflict directly with Grand Admiral Thrawn and the remnants of the Empire. Moff Gideon, also a big character that doesn't appear during the trailer, he said he's going to have a big renaissance during Season 3. I think that means that he's going to go full Hannibal Lecter at the first, like they have him in custody. The Empire will rescue him, and he'll go free at the end of the season. But the whole idea is that Thrawn is sort of like the power behind the remnants of the Empire in his fleet. Moff Gideon was sort of like the mid-bad, even though he seemed like the big boss. He probably thinks of himself as the big bad. They haven't said who they've cast as Thrawn yet, but I think they're actually doing the live-action thing where the animated voiceover actor, Lars Mikkelsen, just plays the live-action version. Because he's a great live-action actor, and the voice would be perfect. 
I've already talked about where Thrawn has been with Ezra Bridger. Ezra Bridger also going to be played by this actor here and is going to be a part of the Ahsoka series. They were stuck in the unknown regions, but at some point were able to make their way back. So when the Ahsoka series begins, she's looking for Ezra Bridger and looking for Thrawn. They'll probably tease where he is at the end of season three. Also, I think the idea of Dr. Pershing comes back in a much bigger way. They'll tease more of what the actual plot was with them cloning Force-sensitive people, trying to make more Force-sensitive troops. They haven't really addressed that in a huge way since The Mandalorian Season 2, and we haven't seen Dr. Pershing in a while either. But it sounds like they're actually trying to lead to a live-action version of Heir to the Empire, the Thrawn trilogy that was done in the 90s, which is a great trilogy. I'd recommend reading those books. During that, some of the plot was a little bit different. Luke Skywalker was a much bigger character, and Thrawn had gained the alliance with another cloned Jedi Master, who kind of turned into a dark Jedi Master by the end of that story. So they just started dealing with more and more Jedi clones. Like, eventually there was a Luke clone that Luke had to face. We'll see if there's a version of that with Grogu, because it seems like Grogu is a much bigger part of this version of that adaptation of the story. That would be crazy. Grogu versus evil Grogu. I don't think they're literally going to do something like that, but I wouldn't be surprised. And I do think that they'll eventually bring Luke Skywalker back for another cameo if they're going to be doing this Heir to the Empire adaptation. It almost makes you wish they actually did the sequel trilogy just adapting the Heir to the Empire trilogy, but now I'm kind of glad that they did it this way because Jon Favreau, Dave Floney can do a much better job across a bunch of different TV series with way more hours to adapt the story instead of trying to cram it into six hours worth of movie. There'll be a bunch more footage because the series is premiering in March, so we'll get more trailers really soon. Of course, I'll do more bonus videos. If there are any big details in the trailer that you spotted that I didn't talk about in the video or any big questions you have, just write them below in the comments. Everyone click here for my Ahsoka trailer video and Easter eggs, and click here for my other Pedro Pascal series, The Last of Us Episode 2 trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. This is the way.